excited to be here. Thank you everybody for, for joining in to listen to me speak. So the theme that I'm talking about today is overcoming adversity. There's an inevitability in life that we will experience adversity. Anyone chasing a goal will face adversity. Um, overcoming that adversity is necessary for a happy, healthy life. And it's also necessary to achieve any type of success. Overcoming adversity has probably been the single most visible theme throughout my athletic career. Uh, my resilience is a skill that I developed through wrestling for which I'm the most thankful for and most proud of. When I was young and naive, uh, I imagined my wrestling career unfolding in a linear, perfect progression. I would win every single tournament, obviously. Uh, I wouldn't have any injuries, obviously. And I would eventually retire on my own terms um, as a multiple world and Olympic champ, obviously. Uh, my career did start off quite strong uh, and it was progressing as I imagined. Coming out of high school, uh, I had been very healthy. I had not suffered any injuries. I was a two-time national champ and I headed to university at Simon Fraser University with a lot of untouched potential and big, big dreams. Uh, after all, I was from a small town and didn't have much wrestling experience or much coaching. My technique was awful. <laughs> and so my coaches and I had pretty lofty expectations um, for what kind of wrestler I could become with, with full-time professional training. Um, the, first, the first month of university was quite a steep learning curve for me. I was constantly sore, constantly tired, but I loved wrestling so much. And so I was having a lot of fun. Uh, one day before I was scheduled to leave for my first college wrestling trip ever, uh, I was in practice and ended up hitting heads with a girl and knocking out my, my front tooth here. And this was my first like injury ever. Uh, and it prevented me from, from attending that trip, my first trip. And so I felt pretty bummed and pretty sorry for myself at that time. Um, but I was still pretty confident that, that my, my goal and this um, like flawless progression towards my Olympic dream would still happen. But I was wrong. Uh, that season, uh, I had such a wonderful time generally. I, it was so challenging, but so fun. And I won a lot, which made it even more fun. Uh, by the end of the season, I was the number one college ranked wrestler at my weight class, which I was pretty proud of. Uh, two days before we were supposed to leave, however, for the college national, the college national championship, my first one at that, uh, I ended up blowing, blowing my ankle or spraining it pretty badly, but so badly that I couldn't walk on it and I was on crutches. My coach ended up bringing me on the trip to the nationals, even though I couldn't walk. Uh, I would later find out that he brought me just because he couldn't refund the ticket and he didn't think that I was going to be able to wrestle. I didn't think I'd be able to wrestle. So we headed down to Oklahoma. Uh, I was still on crutches. Um, and we had, we had a team workout and a weight cutting session. And I said, should I be doing this to my coach? And he said, yeah, do as much as you can. So I ended up just skipping rope on one leg for what seemed like hours <laughs> and I said should I weigh in and he said yeah sure why weigh in so I weighed in uh, my first match came up and I said should I go out there <laughs> and he said yeah go out there and do as much as you can and if it hurts too much just like forfeit and walk off but I made it through the first match and I won and I went to the second match <laughs> made it through and I won in the third match and I won and I made it to the finals and at that point I was facing a girl I had wrestled a few times that year and had always beat. And so I was feeling pretty confident. Uh, after all, I had made it to the finals without being able to really walk on one of my legs or one of my feet. Um, but I lost. I lost that match. And yeah, I felt obviously pretty sad in that moment. And I was beating myself up, but as I reflected on that moment and that whole, that whole year, several lessons became apparent. 
And at the forefront of those lessons was that adversity in life, as in sport in particular, is guaranteed. And it will not consist of one single incident of adversity, but it will be filled with a roller coaster ride of good and bad, highs and lows, wins and losses. And it was at that time I decided I would no longer feel sorry for myself uh, in the bumps in the road or for the bumps in the road, but I would use them as fuel to, to learn, to improve, and to grow. And what became my mantra at that time and it still is today is that moments of adversity are guaranteed, but so are moments of joy and euphoria. So the next few years after that, uh, they were filled with many more ups and downs, wins and losses, and minor injuries like sprains, bumps, bruises. But overall, I felt pretty resilient because I never lost motivation or positivity. And to be honest, my career was progressing quite flawlessly, generally, uh, towards my goal of being an Olympic champion in 2016. Quite early on in high school, I made the goal of 2016 my, um, my ultimate goal because I would be the ideal age for success in the sport of wrestling. And yeah, I just made that my, my ultimate goal. Uh, every time I faced a minor setback, like a minor injury after that point, it would, it would be okay because nothing was as important as the Olympics. And any setback was simply preparing me for, for that Olympic goal. In 2014, I had the best year of my career. I won senior world or senior nationals, sorry, for the first time ever. And I went to the Commonwealth Games. I won the Commonwealth Games. I won University Worlds. And I went to my first world championships where I placed eighth. And so at that moment, I was in the best possible position for the Olympic trials that were going to be happening the following year in 2015. However, following the 2014 World Championships, um, I took a couple weeks off and then went straight back to training. On the first day back um, in training, I ended up tearing my ACL. Um, and that injury was pretty devastating for me at that time. It was my first major injury. It was my first well, and only surgery. And it also threatened my goal of going to the 2016 Olympics and my future in wrestling. So for so many reasons, I struggled that next year, um, mostly because I was struggling to find who I was without wrestling and my values and my identity. And I had never been challenged on those things before. And so once again, I felt bad for myself. There are many moments throughout that year I did feel bad for myself, um, but I was constantly reminding myself that moments of adversity are guaranteed, but so are moments of joy and euphoria. So I made the choice that I was going to make a comeback and I was going to still go to the Olympic qualification, which was happening 12 months after my ACL surgery. So to make a long story short, I, I made it through that year and I won the Olympic trials in December, 2015, officially qualifying me for my first Olympics. Uh, so my ultimate wrestling dream was coming true. Uh, this was definitely one of those moments of euphoria I was talking about. That whole year in 2016, uh, it was amazing. I could say the whole, the whole year was joyous, uh, the preparation for the Olympic Games. Um, the process was so, so fun for me, and I was also competing well. I uh, won like the German Grand Prix and the Olympic Test event, and so I headed to Rio uh, so, so excited, but also so confident. However, the morning of my scheduled match at the Olympic Games, I um, was warming up and I ended up rupturing my hamstring. And this was 10 minutes before my first scheduled match. And obviously I did, at that time, I didn't know what the injury was. So I decided that I was going to go out onto the mat and try to compete. And I walked out onto the mat, the girl, um, snapped my head down and I put my leg out to brace and I had like zero strength in my leg. So they stopped the match and um, I had to pull out of the match and forfeit um, out of the Olympic games. So just like that, um, my Olympic dream had ended, but 
and this moment, this moment, particular moment of adversity felt so much bigger than other moments because 2016 was not just a dream. It was the dream for so long, but it was just a moment was all it was. It was a split second in my entire wrestling career. So during that pain and disappointment, um, I reminded myself that moments of joy and moments of euphoria awaited. And so I dusted myself off and I got up and I continued. In 2017, I primarily used that year to rehab, obviously. I didn't get surgery um, for a lot of reasons. But anyway, um, I questioned whether I would be able to but it would be able to ever wrestle again, um, whether I should retire. Um, but I didn't have expectations really just because the prognosis of my injury was so unknown. Eventually in 2017, I was able to get back to wrestling again. Um, I also got into law school in Calgary and I knew that if I was going to compete and be successful again, I needed to change up some training and some coaching. And so I called up the Calgary coaches and ask them their opinion. And they were so encouraging and so positive. And before I knew it, I was a part of the Calgary Wrestling Club. And that was, that became official in September, 2017. And so for the past three years since that time, um, my wrestling has been filled with some more ups and downs, big wins, um, big losses, minor injuries. Um, but in December, 2019, I was able to, to win the Canadian Olympic team trials. And then just this past March, I officially qualified a spot for the 2020 or 2021 Olympic games. So two more moments of euphoria in my career. Um, the news of this postponement, the Olympic postponement is just, I see it as another moment of adversity, something to overcome and something that will be overcome. And I'm confident that that is going to be, be a good year with some more moments of joy and euphoria. So I hope, I hope all of you guys listening take away from my talk that, that in sport and life and in life, moments of adversity are guaranteed. However, if you choose to get up and persist with dedication, positivity, and grit following those moments, moments of joy and euphoria are also promised. Nothing is everlasting and nothing is predictable. And man, those are good things. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you guys for listening. How do you respond to adversity such as the coronavirus in terms of mindset, workout, etc.? cetera? Um, that's a good question. Um, as I said, I just, I just see it as a, a bump in the road, one of the many bumps um, along along the journey of life and all I can do, I can't change that. Uh, all I can do is be safe and prepare in the best way that I can given my resources. So I do have like workout stuff here at home. I do have a spin bike. And so for me, it doesn't really change my goal. I still am qualified. I'm still, I still know I'm going to the Olympics next summer. And so yeah, it's just like being positive and, um, and, and keep doing whatever I can to, to get to that goal. Robin asks, what attracted you to wrestling at the very beginning? Um, I just was super athletic as a kid. I was put in sports from the age of three. So yeah, compared to like my, my friends and everybody else, I was really strong, awkwardly strong for a girl in particular. And so my friends were in wrestling and they asked me to come try it out with them. And so I did. Um, and I just, I guess I liked, I liked winning and I liked being successful at it. It was something that just came naturally to me. I had or I have three siblings and we would kind of wrestle around at home. So I did like being physical and it just seemed to be a natural fit. What is your favorite moment of joy so far in your journey? I would definitely say there's, there's a few, but the moment where that I, that I felt the most euphoric was in the, at the 2015 um, Olympic trials 
when I won, um, just because it was my first Olympics. Uh, I had been through so much that year before, and it was the trials was held in Alberta, so my entire family and all my friends were there, and so that was a particularly special moment. How have your learnings from wrestling helped with law school and other and other outside challenges? That is a good question. Um, I think that the lessons we learn in sport can be transferred to every other aspect of life, and so when I face challenges or go through experiences outside of sport, including law school, uh, I can just use those, those learnings and those teachings that sport has taught me um, to be successful. And that the best thing, one of the best things about an athlete is that we become so good at organization and time management, which um, I attribute a lot to my success in, in school in particular. So. You have been supported by women across Canada through 150 women. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome um, seeing women in particular coming together to support each other um, and to just like cheer each other on and root for each other. And it's pretty special and it's pretty unique to Canada. And yeah, so, so thankful for it. Mm -hmm.